coordinator for PMY Technologies Commercial and OEM Business Unit. Um, today we're going to talk about 8K workflows and how NVIDIA Quadro is revolutionizing the media and entertainment industry from a post-production standpoint. All right, so what kind of cameras can film in 8K, right? So that, that's one of the biggest questions. Um, on the left side of your screen, you'll see broadcasting cameras. In the middle of the screen, you'll see VR cameras. And on the right side, you'll see cinema cameras. So for broadcasting cameras, anything from Sony to Atashi and other manufacturers are creating these 8K cameras that are filming major television shows and sporting events. Moving forward into 2019, we are going to see these cameras being used more and more often to film these major kind of events and television shows that you know and love. In the middle of the screen, VR cameras. These ca cameras have anywhere from four to 24 cameras filming simultaneously, and in post-production, we then take this footage and you can stitch it together to create an 8K-sized image. Um, on the right side of the screen, cinema cameras. So this is a red digital cinema camera. This is um, These cameras film all the major Hollywood movies that you guys are seeing in love today. Anything from King Kong, Stranger Things, um, Blade Runner 2049, all the major movies are being shot on these kind of cameras. Uh, they make the DSMC2 with the Helium 8K sensor and the Monstro 8K sensor. So the big question, why would you want to work in 8K, right? It's a very expensive hobby to do. Um, but 8K is 7,680 pixels by 4,320, while 4K is only 3,840 by 2160. You have a lot more information and colors in this 7,680 by 4,320 image. So that gives you a lot of room to play with. You have a lot of room to crop your image and resize it to however you want it to look. Meanwhile, in 4K, you have less information, less colors, and less room to play with in regards to this kind of footage. On the right side of your screen here, you'll see a screenshot of Premiere Pro and the work stabilizer effect within this editing software. With 8K footage, with this effect applied to the 8K footage, say you have a handheld shot and it's looking very shaky. With this effect on that 8K footage, it then stabilizes it and it gives it a much smoother and more pleasant look. So this is a screenshot from Red Digital Cinema's website. It's um, a image of a lizard. HD video, if you crop that little square up on the top of the screen, that's what your image is going to look like, right? It's going to look really blurry and very pixelated. The pixels are much larger. In 4K, you know, we, we are maintaining that, that detail within the image. You're starting to see more colors, more color gradients, and more detail within that image. And we move into 8K, and it's almost near perfect, right? We push in, that's what I was saying, by cropping an image. So if you want to zoom in on that lizard's face, you can do it with 8K footage very easily. And it's, it looks very nice. Just by a show of hands, um, how many people are working with HD video? Any, anyone working in 4K? Awesome. Any 8K? No? <laughs> Alright, well, I just recently had my first experience with an uh, 8K camera, and I visited Red Digital Cinema Studio in New York City, and I actually got hands-on with their GSMC2 Helium 8K sensor. Now, you walk up to these cameras, they're very big, they're intimidating, right? They're, they're big, they're bulky, and they're very, very expensive. But within 15 minutes of working with the studio manager, I felt comfortable enough to go out onto the street and use this camera for the first time and film in 8K. Um, so if you stop by our demo booth later on, and if you have any questions, we can walk through some of the footage that I shot in New York and some other footage provided to us by a studio out in LA. So what do you need for post-production workflows, right? You, need, you not only need a powerful GPU, but you need a powerful CPU, you need a lot of memory, and you need a lot of storage. When you're filming in 8K, these file sizes are very large. In about 30 minutes of filming in New York City with the RED camera, we managed to film 78 gigabytes worth of footage. Um, so you're going to need a lot of storage, whether that be a RAID uh, system or a hard drive or something like that. Um, 
Club, we recommend as solutions for editing 8K footage is the Quadro P5000 and the Quadro P6000. Now, a lot of questions are asked, okay, why don't I use GeForce instead of Quadro? Well, Quadro offers a lot more drivers that are better handled by NVIDIA Quadro cards for editing softwares. NVIDIA Quadro is all based on precision within these 3D modeling programs and editing softwares. And this brings up the point that time is money, right? Your time is valuable, and you want to get your projects done smoothly and efficiently and as fast as possible. And with NVIDIA Quadro and our solutions, we can provide that, that efficiency and time that you need. So again, what resolution are you working with? We offer all sorts of solutions for all styles of video. It doesn't matter if you're shooting in FHD or you're shooting in AK, we have something for you. So for FHD video, we recommend the NVIDIA Quadro P1000 graphics card and or the P2000. Um, which we are raffling off at the end of the show. If you're working with VFX work, so you're working with After Effects and you're implementing that into your timelines in Premiere or any other software for that matter, we recommend the NVIDIA Quadro P4000. Moving up into 4K and beyond, all the way to 8K, we recommend the P5000 and the P6000. Um, this demo booth over here with this camera right to your left, uh, my left, that is a station with an NVIDIA Quadro P6000 and we are showcasing it at that demo booth. So stop by at the end of the talk if you'd like to see some of that footage being edited with this card. If you're moving into the AI space within editing, we're going to see that a lot more in the future. Um, AI being implemented into video editing software, we recommend the NVIDIA Quadro GV100. So just a little bit more information about the P6000 is up on the screen here. Like I mentioned earlier, it is over at the booth behind you guys. So, you know, take a look at this information. If this is more detailed info that you are interested in. Um, so I want to thank you all for coming out and listening to this talk. I really appreciate it. Again, if you have any questions, please direct them towards me or our Quadro professional, Carl Fligger, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Does anyone have any questions? Do you provide uh, drivers for older systems? Like, so say you have something that's quote unquote obsolete, but you were to get newer cards for it, do you think there's drivers that could be acquired from maybe a lead higher up in the company? Um, and I will answer that. I'm the field sales senior manager for the company. Are you talking like an older quad board? I mean, uh, like an older, like an M or a K. An older system. No, an older computer system. Well, depending on your specs and I'll give you my cards, you can actually elongate the life cycle of the system by putting a new car in there. Uh, a lot of these cars have power efficiency. Definitely the P6000 is a high-end board, so you need a power connector. So power supply is very key. The power supply is the key of uh, the heart of the system. But a lot of the older systems, the, the CPU, the memory is okay, but once you start working with these applications, they utilize the GPU, so you don't really care that much about that. So depending on the spec, we can help you upgrade to the right graphics board. But keep in mind, if you have a system that has a PC Express 2.0, you're gonna be limited to that bandwidth, right? So that's gonna be your bottom line, not the graphics board. But at the same time, whatever you have in there, if you upgrade to a new card, your productivity is gonna be go up. Like, like he said, time is money. The faster we finish a project, the faster we come to the next one. This is what we do. We come to this show to understand what is going to make me more productive. What's next that I can create this project and go to the next one. But definitely, if you talk to me at the end and we can see the spec and we can merge the resolution and we can locate that cycle, the life cycle of the system. Any more questions? All right. Oh. Okay. PCIe. What version of PCIe 3 or 4? Go for This is PC Express 3.0 today. Right. Yeah. And it's always backwards compatible to PC Express 2.0 1.0. Definitely you don't want to run 1.0, but most of the people that have older systems, they have PC Express 2.0. It's always backwards compatible. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, thank you for your questions. Right now, we're going to be doing the drawing for the...